Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at drawing exterior walls from a plan in SketchUp for Web. So a lot of the steps, the basic ideas are the same regardless of what platform you work on. Um, but the actual steps in getting in a reference plan in and getting your your ref or your your images or your lines drawn to, to represent those those walls is a little bit different depending on where you're at and we're going to take a look at how to do that in SketchUp for Web right now. All right, so here I am. I'm in SketchUp for Web. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, hit the little menu button, and I am going to go take a look at my settings. One thing I just want to make sure of navigation, I do this every time I come in here is check to make sure I have the proper navigational device because stuff can get a little kooky if you have trackpad on but you're drawing with the mouse or you have mouse on and you're drawing with trackpad. So I just double check because I do switch back and forth. If I'm on the go, I don't have mouse, I'll switch back to trackpad. But I'm going to make sure mouse is turned on and then uh, I'm going to close that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to import and I'm going to import from my device uh, on my desktop I just have this little image I'm going to say open that and then after you get it imported it's going to ask you do you want to import this as a material or an image I'm importing this as an image so I'm going to bring it in I'm just going to kind of drag it out like that um, this is a fairly low quality image so I'm just going to be kind of using it as a general reference to input here so first thing I'm going to do is scale it um, if I look at some of these dimensions right here this room says it's 19 and a half. So I'm gonna assume that uh, six inch walls or so. So I'm gonna say from here to here is 19. Nine, or I'm sorry, 20, I'm gonna assume that's 20 feet. So if I click right here, somewhere around like there where those two lines meet, draw a line straight up, I can notice right away, see how that's kind of coming off? It's not staying perfectly straight there. Um, if I, I'm trying to use my shortcuts on my mouse on, on from desktop. <laughs> There's a learning learning thing for me. All right, so if I draw a line right there, so right, I'm right on the outside of that, that gray haze that is the edge. And I come up here, see the difference? So this, this, this line should be right about here. So that tells me that this plant's not quite straight. That's cool. I can fix that. I'm going to say rotate. Um, actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say select this, select this, uh, the, the plan. Then I'm going to say rotate, and I come down here to the bottom where that line is. See, it's drawn right on the, the gray blur to the right of that image. So if I come up here and grab that image by the edge of the gray blur right there and drag it over so it lines up. Now that line is straight. See, that line is a consistent distance away all the way up. That's good. All right, so I can go ahead and erase that line. Now I'm going to draw a new line like I had before. I'm going to draw an edge right here draw that straight up here and that should be 20 feet so I'm going to grab my tape measure and I'm going to click here to here and say 20 foot I'm gonna type in 20 foot enter I'm gonna resize the model yes and there we go it resized now that is now 20 feet now we got this it is now straight so my, it's orthogonal, my up, downs, left, and rights are all matching my axes to my drawing that I'm referencing. And it is to scale. So now I could come in here and draw in my exterior walls. Now one of the things I'm gonna do, so again, this is this is an image, right? This is a, a low quality image, it's a bitmap. You can see like that's where we're looking at all these fuzzy, uh, blurry lines and stuff. So I don't have things I can snap to, I can't just go, Click, 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 click around. So what I would do instead is as I'm coming across here, move my mouse to about where the edge is and then keep an eye down here on my, my dimension. So as I pull this across right here and see, oh, that's probably somewhere around two foot six and then just type in two foot six, enter. Same thing as I come down this direction. Oh, that's right around three foot. So I'm gonna say 36, enter. And then what I would do is I would just trace around here and just like I said just keep doing that keep watching that's about 11 foot 8 and just type in the dimension to override I could arbitrarily just kind of click on these points but then I'm going to have something that's just about as messy uh, 
with my input. Oops, that's not that was not it. Try that again. Five foot, not six foot. Um, I would end up with something that's just about as messy as these blurry lines that I'm I'm tracing off of. So it's just a matter of going around. I don't actually have that many extra walls here. It's going to go pretty quick. Um, so it's about about thirty one six and get those in there. Obviously, if you're working off of something like uh, CAD plan or something like that, you're going to be a lot more accurate. This is actually a image that we used in a live model taken from a magazine from the 50s. So <laughs> this is not terribly, terribly accurate. Once I get those exterior in, I can just use offset if assuming all the walls are the same size. And like I said, I think this scale to about six inches to get those exterior walls in there. Now, what I could do at this point, I could take this as it is right now. I could say push, pull, drag these up to whatever height they're supposed to be, and then come in and put my exterior doors and windows in there. I don't like that very much personally. Um, what I would rather do is I would rather come in, I'm only gonna do this on the front wall because there's a lot of windows around here and I don't wanna, you guys don't have to watch me do this for 10 minutes, but um, I would rather come in here and break this wall where there's that window. So here I have about a three foot window. So put in my 36 space and then uh, come over say like six inches. And then we have this three foot window again. So I'm just going to move it and hit option to copy it. And then actually what I, ha what I have going on here is this just kind of repeats. So I might just kind of grab that option copy there. It's like one, two, three, four, five X. There we go. So that gets me all my windows. And over here I have a door. So I'm, I'm just going to put that in too. So I'm going to get my uh, three inches over like that. And then this door is three foot six. There we go. And what that allows me to do is I'm going to push this up to my standard height, right? Take my walls up. And I would have done that all the way around. Like I said, we're cutting it a little bit short, not to, not to deprive you guys, but to keep you from getting bored. So I'm going to say it's like eight foot one and then bring all of my standard height or all my full height wall sections to that same height. Then my windows, I'll go ahead and just pull these up to whatever my sill height is. So, um, is it like, I don't know, 32 inches. I'm just going to double click each of these to bring it up to that same height, assuming they are the same height, of course. Now what I have to do is I have to come down from the, or come so, some way I got to come in and put in where my, where my tops of my headers are. So I do this a couple different ways. One thing I could do is I could use a guide because I'm learning to like guides. I could bring this up and say this is supposed to be at I don't know, six foot ten, and I could put that in there. And with that there, I could say draw a line. You know, find find the intersection of that guide in the wall. Draw a line across like that, and then I can push pull that across to here, and I could carry that across the whole way. That that is one way to do it. The downside to that is if I had exterior doors or windows on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine walls, that would mean I have to do nine guides. Not a huge deal, but another thing I could do, let me show you, let me show you another, just a little shortcut for you here. Um, I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna triple click and make this into a group, which I'd wanna do anyhow. Sooner or later, I wanna isolate uh, my wall geometry from everything else. I'm gonna draw a big old rectangle like this, and then I'm going to probably make that a group too. Let's do that. Make group. And then I'm going to move it. It's on the ground right now. So I'm going to move it vertically to whatever that height is. So I can actually inference this right here. I could type 610. And what that will do is that will actually give me something to inference directly. So if I click in here, I can say, oh, let's draw a line from here to here, here to here. Basically any place I'm going to pull header geometry across, 
I have the ability to pretty quickly and easily break this wall. One more right here. There we go. Then I can just push pull this across like this. Pull this one across like this. And because each of these are the same, I can actually double click, double click, double click, double click, and you guessed it, double click. And when I'm done, exit here, I can delete this reference, and there we go. So I have a little bit of cleanup here to do, so I can just grab an eraser, pull that across like that to get rid of the extra lines out at the bottom. Do that again up here at the top. And then with that, uh, I have my exterior walls. So again, I didn't do all of the doors and windows because it's the same process. You guys, you guys did it once, you could do it again. I have, I have faith in you. Um, but uh, yeah, fairly quick, fairly easy, and right inside of SketchUp for web. So I hope that helps. Um, like I said, a lot of the processes are the same, whether you're in SketchUp for web or SketchUp for de desktop. The interface is a little bit different, especially at the beginning there. Uh, there's no extensions in SketchUp for web, so you are limited to just the native tools, but you can see any of tools get you pretty far. You can do just about everything you got to do without having to worry about extensions or anything that you get in desktop. It is, it is available. It is there for you. Uh, if you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Is there a workflow you'd like to see us show? Is there a specific piece of software in the SketchUp family you'd like us to, to talk about? Let us know that. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.